to another game that's also not Oracle of Ages. Uh, this is Ethan Von Real, and today we're here to play a game called... Mega Man X! So I'm gonna go ahead and just jump right into things. Um, you'll get an explanation eventually why I'm not doing Oracle Ages, but what the hell? Um, it's my channel, I can do whatever the fuck I want, so we're gonna go ahead and get into this shit. Alright, so... I'm actually an extremely huge Mega Man fan. Um, Mega Man X was actually one of the first video games, God damn it, I'm bad at this game, uh, <laughs> that I ever owned. Um, one of the first games that I religiously played to try to, to get better and better at it. Um, and like, I guess took notes and shit. Um, and it, it's one of the series that really just got me into gaming um, to begin with. I remember actually when I first got it, um, it was waiting in the back seat of my mother's car um, when I got home from school, or when she um, picked me up from school. I'm doing kind of terrible right now, I've been eating a lot of shit, but I'm playing on a keyboard, um, and I have rebound keys for the ZS and ES so that I can play another game, so it's kind of awkward to play with. Um, if I had a gamepad, which I'm, I'm saving money for, this would be a lot less embarrassing. Also, it's fucking hard to talk and commentate at the same time. But anyway, um, it was waiting in the backseat of my mom's car, and I've been hooked since, basically. Um, it was one of the first games I ever got. Um, and part of the reason why I like this series so much is that it has a really interesting plot. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say it's mega mature. Um, I mean, it does mention a lot of things, but it, it ages kind of well, and its transition into the follow-up series is pretty solid. Um, I'd say now, even though I do like Mega Man X a lot, um, I actually like the Mega Man Zero series and ZX series more overall, um, with the, the Zero series being the highest on my list. But as far as nostalgia goes, this game is, is really great to me. It actually kind of, I'm smiling just a, a teensy bit here on playing it. But in any case, um, for y'all who aren't really, uh, I guess, into the Mega Man series, part of the plot of this game is basically that in the year 21X, um, about 100 um, years from the 8-bit Mega Man games, basically, um, Dr. Light, the creator of the original Mega Man, real or learned how to basically create self-aware robots that aren't limited by their programming and that are learning machines. Um, and what that basically amounts to is he basically created super powerful humans. Um, even though um, Reploids, as they're called in the series, are um, are actually, yes, they are artificial beings, for all intents and purposes, they are people with superpowers because they can learn and think and have emotions just like people do, but at the same time they can bench press like five tons being robots. So. That's actually one of the conflicts in the story they don't necessarily talk about, is that, um, humanity, um, even though it's not directly addressed in most of the series, is kind of butthurt, butthurt about the existence of Reploids, rightfully so, um, because they can kind of break a human in half like a Kit Kat bar if they really wanted to. Oh hey, it's our first boss. Alright, so this fella here is named Vile. Um, and he's gonna fuck our shit. Um, he's bigger than us. He has pretty. Oh god! Ah! Ah! No! Ah! Get out of here! Um, basically, this is a, a hopeless fight where we're we're gonna. Ow! We're gonna get a fuck. Ah! God damn it! <laughs> Fucking camping, bitch. Anyway, um, I'm gonna actually censor that. Anyway, <laughs> um, you worthless piece of. <clears throat> you worthless. What's a, what's a really brutal voice? You worthless. Uh, you worthless piece of scrap metal. Did you really think you could defeat me? <laughs> I couldn't find a good voice in my brain. Oh, what's that? There's something humming. Oh, what the hell? Hey, you're red. You must be a hero. All right. So, what just happened was that guy named Vile just beat the shit out of us. Um, and our bro Zero just saved us. <clears throat> I guess I'm just not that powerful enough to defeat him yet. Uh, I kind of used two sentences at once. X, you shouldn't expect to defeat him. He is designed to be a war machine. Remember, you have not reached your full power yet. If you use all of the abilities you were designed with, you should become stronger. 
You may even become as powerful as I am. I'll scout ahead and collect as much information on Sigma's fortress as I can. I'll meet up with you when you get there. See you later. X, I know you can do it. Um, and so we have our secondary character here, Zero, who is a, a mainstay of the series. I'm gonna ignore this password screen. Um, basically, as a quick plot over review, um, without too much rambling, basically what happened was, in this first game of the series, um, a professor named Dr. Kane, who's actually an archaeologist, discovers a capsule that Mega Man X is locked in. Um, and there's a warning on the capsule that's like, basically saying, by the way, bro, um, I just created a robot that can think and feel, um, and can rip human beings in half with its bare robot hands. So you need to really think about what you're doing before you open him up and release him on society. And so he ignores that warning and he opens it up. And more importantly, he thinks it's a really good idea to mass produce, um, robots much like Mega Man X in order to... I don't know, I don't, I think he get, I think he's a very wealthy man before the end of the series. I don't know what exactly his intentions were. But anyway, what this basically amounts to, um, I'm gonna pick the next stage here, is... Quick pause, quick pause. Chill Penguin. Aw oh, yeah, it's all chill, baby. And we're back. Sorry about that, I had to make a quick cut. I don't know if you'll notice that in the transition, though. But, um, in any case, what the, what the plot of this first game basically amounts to, and the, the series more, or less specifically, is the, the implications of creating sentient robots um, on the human race. What, what happens when robots basically decide that, well, I can kill people because I want to, um, and then at the same time, um, it just creates a lot of problems. Um, one of the most interesting parts is that some some of the Reploids, as they're called in the series, or the robots that have emotions, um, are designed to be war machines. And what that basically causes is, like, it, in my opinion, it's kind of dumb to make a machine for war and then not expect it to, like, not want to kill stuff if it has emotions. Like, if you created it specifically to, to blow shit up, of course it's gonna want to blow people up later, but it's actually not that simple. There are other things going on in the series that I won't quite spoil for you. But th that's what people think is going on in the first game, at least. Um, so, yeah, that that's that. Um, don't fucking create sentient robots to just um, blow shit up when you could just make normal robots that don't have emotions. In any case, we're actually about to meet our creator right here, if you didn't know this is a big-ass capsule. So let's go ahead and talk to him. <clears throat> so you've come. X, I gave you the ability to choose your own path in life. And I hoped the world would allow you to choose a peaceful one. But now, it seems that you are destined to fight. Because I thought the world might need a new champion. I have hidden capsules like this one. If you find and use them, you will be able to increase your powers. Beyond anything the world has ever known. Step into this capsule. And receive an acceleration system to boost your speed. Good luck, X. Alright, so we just got upgraded, that's amazing. Um, what we just got is, um, the ability to dash, which is actually probably one of the most handy abilities in the series. This is an awkward key binding for a dash button. I'm gonna fucking, I better not die. Sorry, this is really awkward to do on a keyboard, because it's like, where I want to... It's hard to do it without, like, jumping at the same time. Anyway. Oh god. But in any case, um, the other side of the story, for you who wonder why we're going around killing other robots that look like animals, um, is that after it was recognized that having sentient robots could be a possible danger to society, um, and some of them had already 
went crazy and started killing people. Um, this group called the Maverick Hunters, goddammit, was created in order to basically, um, kill these Maverick machines. Um, and I would argue that kind of, it kind of sucks, it kind of doesn't. Again, for my previous argument of how can you make a machine with, like, chainsaws for arms that has human emotions and then expect it not to want to murder people. It just, it just seems kind of silly to me. Um, but again, the creation of sentient robots, or mass production of them, kind of happened without any real forethought on um, Dr. Kane's part. Oh, God damn it! I'm gonna die. Yep, I'm dead. I'm dead. That's embarrassing. I'm terrible. I'm just gonna not even bother trying to dash, because I, I can't fucking... Um, do it reasonably. Get out of here. Proceeds to dash. Anyway. Uh, fucking dragonflies. Leave me alone. <laughs> anyway. Oh god. Oh god. I really need to get a gamepad for these recordings. I'm pretty sure there's someone raging in their seat why I'm doing so terribly. But in any case, ah! Like I, I just ran straight into that thing's face. Anyway, um, so yeah, the the lesson I learned from this, uh, robots are gonna kill people no matter what. Um, I'm gonna stop this recording here at the boss with my one single, uh, unit of health, and we'll see how that goes. Um, I'll catch you later. Don't create robots that have emotions. They'll kill you. Um, please don't do it. Bye. Have fun. See you later. Thanks for watching.